It feels good to have a fully functioning high-speed scooter again. What you are looking at is the Varla Eagle One, a dual 1000 watt motor scooter and new direct competitor to the Zero 10X, Cabo Mantis, Apollo Pro, and other similar scooters. Varla is a new company that reached out to me to be one of the first to introduce you guys to this scooter. This video will just be the unboxing and first impressions of the Eagle One, but you will no doubt see plenty of this scooter in my future videos. Let's jump into it. Let me make it clear up front that everything I say in this video and in future videos about the scooter reflects my 100% true thoughts and feelings about the scooter. I owe it to you guys to tell you if a scooter is worth your money and what my actual experience with it is. Varla has encouraged me to push the Eagle One to its limits and give my honest feedback on the scooter, and that's exactly what I intend to do. While I unbox the Eagle One, let me jump right to what is probably on your mind. How is this scooter different from other clones of this scooter on the market? Well, it seems Varla is familiar with the competition because it has undercut the Zero 10X by $100 and has undercut the Apollo Pro by $300, so right off the bat, you're saving money. As you can see, they also sent full protective equipment. Knee pads, elbow guards, and wrist guards. I don't wear protective equipment except helmet and goggles while riding as a personal choice, but I'll probably end up trying out the knee pads while mountain biking sometime since I don't own a pair and my knees always get messed up when I bike. The quality of the gear honestly doesn't particularly impress me, but it's free protective gear so it's nothing to sneeze at. The thing that they included that was extra in the box that was the coolest to me was the different grip tape designs that you can choose from. I knew immediately which one was going on my scooter. The other designs are decent, but there was no way I was going for any other design than the dope graffiti design. The colors just give the scooter an immaculate vibe. So props to Varla for the cool little bonus. The rest of the contents of the box are pretty standard. They include a multi-tool, like most other scooters come with, that'll help you get the scooter set up and put together if you don't already have tools. The handlebars come disconnected from the scooter, but the scooter comes fully assembled otherwise. Higher end scooters like this require a good bit of adjusting and tuning before riding. I will be releasing a separate video very soon that will go over adjusting and setting up a new scooter that will include handlebar and cockpit setup, brake adjustment, P setting adjustment, and other important things to do before using your scooter, like checking tire pressure and bedding in your brakes. I want to make it a separate video that you guys can use as a reference and easily find in the future. Stay tuned for that in the next couple days. Now that the scooter is magically set up and ready to go, let's jump into some first impressions I had of the Eagle One right out of the box. And then I'll talk about my thoughts on the scooter after the first 10 miles. Right off the bat, I'm impressed with the weight and feel of this scooter. The scooter weighs in around 80-85 pounds, so it's definitely not designed to be portable or easy to carry. But that's exactly how I want it. The extra weight and size of this scooter makes it feel solid and durable. The scooter feels wide and long and has a decent amount more meat on its bones than my other scooter. The stem locks use a simple quick release system and locks out the stem solidly with little to no play. This is a great relief to me after dealing with the loose wiggly stem of my Mantis over the past month. I'll be interested to see how this stem holds up over time. I also really like the standard size bike stem clamp used for the handlebars. This opens up the potential for handlebar upgrades if I feel like going wider with the bars or I like something with less back sweep or that comes to a different height. Upgradability always scores a lot of points in my book because you want your scooter to feel customized to your liking. Speaking of upgradability, I usually am quick to switch out handlebar grips that come stock on most scooters, but these locking grips on the Eagle One pleasantly surprised me. The extra bit of grip that sticks out gives a solid surface for your palms to rest on and adds to the stability and comfort of the grips. The little hole in the middle of this extra bit allows you to wrap your finger all the way around. I like its balance of firmness and stickiness, but I do wish that it had more texture on the back sides for my fingers. That being said, I'm not planning on switching these out, at least for right now. The thing I do wish I could remove is this keyed ignition switch. I believe that they put these on these scooters for security reason, but the reality is that this key isn't preventing theft. The scooter can just be rolled or carried away. You should always be locking up your scooter with a heavy duty chain or U-lock. The ignition switch is redundant and inconvenient. The key has to stay in the ignition the whole time the scooter is on, just like a car. 
This means that you either have to have your whole keychain hanging off the scooter the whole time you ride, or you have to take your key off the keychain every time you ride so you don't have the whole keychain swing around while you ride. My solution is going to be to put a single key on a small carabiner that can stay on my keychain and be taken off and put on quickly. This really is my only complaint with the cockpit section of this scooter, and it really isn't a huge deal at the end of the day. The coil shock suspension system seems to be dialed in at a good compression rate to soak up bumps without being overly stiff or overly squishy. While I don't think the jump test is a great indication of how the scooter will actually perform while riding, bouncing on the scooter doesn't bottom out the suspension, which gives me a positive indication that this scooter will handle curbs and off-road riding well. Barla has encouraged me to take the scooter off-road and get some mud on it, so I definitely will be testing those capabilities out eventually. The wheels are a pretty standard 10 inch diameter, though I will say that such a heavy robust scooter makes these wheels feel quite small. After getting the scooter all tuned up, tightened and ready to go, I took it for its inaugural ride around town. I took it for a total of about 10 miles and here's what I learned. The downside of this being a heavier scooter is that the acceleration takes a bit of a hit when compared to lighter scooters in this category. The trade-off of acceleration for durability is well worth it, however. Plus, very few people will be left wanting when it comes to acceleration on this scooter anyway, so it's really a nitpicky point to make. One of the things I noticed immediately while steering was what seems to be an intentional design choice. I doubt it's visible on camera, but when the front wheel is perfectly in line with the body of the scooter, there's a slight feeling of the stem and handlebars locking in place to keep the wheel pointed exactly forward. It is a very, very slight feeling, but it is enough of a feeling to notice when riding the scooter. I assume this is to help with stability and wobble at higher speeds when you don't want the wheel to wander, but it's still a little bit of a strange feeling. The handlebars turn loose and free except right here when it wants to stop and kind of pop into place. And then, slightly more than normal force is required to continue to turn it in the same direction. The scooter wants you to keep the wheel straight on. 010X owners and other clone owners, please tell me if this is the same on your scooter, and if so, tell me how you feel about it. I personally initially dislike the feeling, as it makes turning feel a little awkward and jerky. Perhaps I will come to appreciate it the more I ride, since turning at higher speeds is done by leaning rather than turning the wheel. But for right now, I'm not a huge fan. I won't make any rush judgments on it, because we are still in early phases, and I might end up eating my words later down the road. I also initially had a bit of speed wobble at higher speeds, but after letting a little bit of air out of the tires to give them more surface area to grab the ground with, the issue has mostly gone away. The tires arrived rock solid hard. I think this was due to the elevation change from the shipping location in California, which is at close to sea level, to my location in Utah at 4,500 feet elevation. Once the tires had less air and a little more surface area on the road, the scooter stabilized nicely. I still get the occasional wobble around the 30 to 40 mile per hour mark, which is something I did not experience on my Mantis. While I cannot say exactly what's causing it, I attribute it to the heavier weight and taller deck height of this scooter, pushing the center of gravity higher and amplifying weight shifts at higher speed. The geometry of this scooter isn't doing it any favors either, but geometry is an issue across the entire industry, so that's a topic for another day. As long as I'm positioned correctly on the scooter and don't suddenly shift my weight at high speeds, I have no issues with it, as should be the case. Those who own clones of this scooter, please chime in down in the comments if you've had any issues with speed wobble. It is no surprise that the scooter is fast. It accelerates smoothly and powerfully and hits speeds upwards of 40 miles per hour. Because of the size and weight of this scooter, high speeds feel more natural while riding. It feels like a scooter that's designed to go fast, it handles hills well, as is to be expected from dual motors of this wattage. Frankly, the braking power doesn't quite match the power that the motors give this scooter. The braking feels a bit underwhelming, but mechanical disc brakes will always be inferior to hydraulic disc brakes in terms of stopping power. Most scooters in this price range do not come with hydraulic disc brakes. Should they? I would say for $1,600, yes they should. Do they? Typically, no. I don't like it, but that is the current state of the scooter industry. The biggest positive I took from the first ride out was how well the suspension seems to be tuned. 
The ride was insanely cushy and flowy, and the scooter didn't bottom out on curbs or through potholes and construction areas. The suspension seemed to encourage me to hit those rough patches in the road rather than avoid them. I felt like the Eagle one could take any of them easily. I'm excited to see what else the suspension system of the scooter is capable of. Overall, the ride was a positive experience and I immensely enjoyed myself. I felt confident on the scooter and the only thing that stopped me from riding all day was the fact that I didn't wait for the battery to fully charge before taking it out. The scooter looks good. It has some flair and personality without being too over the top. This scooter will be my daily commuter and will be at the heart of my content for many months to come. So it'll get plenty of use and we will see together how it holds up and how it fares compared to my other scooters. The review for this scooter will not be anytime soon. The same way I put the Mantis through its paces before reviewing it, I will beat this scooter into the ground before telling you in a full review whether or not you should buy it. However, if this first impression has convinced you to get this scooter, or you have had your eyes on a 010X or Apollo Pro or similar scooter, this scooter is up and available on Varla's website right now. Pre-ordering a scooter and waiting the weeks or months to get it can be frustrating, but Varla has the scooters in stock right now and they ship out from California. The link to the scooter is in the description. You can get 50 bucks from signing up with your email when you get to the site. The link down below is not an affiliate link and I get no money from the sales of this scooter. Because I'm not getting any money from the sales of this scooter, you'll always know that my review and my feedback on this scooter is 100% true. Thanks for watching this review and I'll see you soon in my next video.